As Republican-led states continue to enact policies that the majority of Americans do not agree with, organizations are making decisions as to where they will locate or expand to, and these policies are having an impact. For example, the U.S. military is now reconsidering the location of the headquarters of the new Space Command that was supposed to go to Huntsville, Alabama, but now they're looking at Colorado Springs. Let's talk about it. Hey everybody, it's Dr. David. So when organizations, companies decide where they're going to locate, they take many things into account. But of course, some of that has to be how their employees will be treated in their comfort level in living in such locations. Okay. Now, employees, they don't want to live somewhere that they feel that their lives will not be able to be lived the way that they want to because their choices are being taken away from them or don't exist there. There will be hesitance to relocate there. And in fact, that's the reason why so many people moved to Florida during the pandemic because they felt that in their previous state that they were under too much restriction and they wanted to move to a location where they were able to practice their lives way more that they like to. And so they came to places like Florida. Now, as an example of how policies can impact business decisions. We've heard a lot about Disney and how the Disney Corporation, um, among other things, decided to not put a $1 billion investment into a place in central Florida that would have allowed for an expansion um, and that would have also brought about 2,000 jobs to Florida because the government, the governor in particular, attacked Disney publicly and tried to move to injure their company because of their lack of support of the LGBTQ plus community. Now, many organizations I also know are now reconsidering even doing conventions and conferences here in Florida. You know, Florida is one of the convention and conference um, capitals of the world. People on the East Coast all over come here to Orlando, come to beach locations because this is where they want to also hang out. But now a lot of these organizations don't want to support the Florida economy. As a result, the Florida economy will suffer because there's less revenue. Now, um, of course, this is what kind of brings us to the military conversation that we're talking about now. Now, as I said, the headquarters for the Space Command um, is was supposed to, they were talking about moving it to Huntsville, Alabama. But because of the extreme measures being put in place in Alabama, as I said, now they're moving into, looking to move to Colorado. Now, just for people who don't know, the Space Command is a unified Pentagon program between the Army, Navy, and Air Force. This is different than Space Force that the previous U.S. president had started up. So two different things, similar sounding name. Okay, now, in terms of why people might not want to move there, to a certain place. Well, you know, it's not just the military themselves, but their families um, and just being in an environment where they are comfortable being. Now, for instance, what do we know that um, some where some of the limits who, who are not wanting to move to such places? Young people. Right. The younger people, the younger generations um, are more and more offended by these policies because it has more of an effect on them as opposed to, say, older people and their grandkids. All right. So this is this is potentially a big problem because, again, young court who obviously are the recruits for the military, young people who are people um, who are um, as well as other businesses trying to recruit, usually young people. OK. And young people are obviously the ones that are impacted by these policies, these laws. OK. Now, of course, um, if they feel that they're in a state where they can't make their choices for health care, um, for reproductive rights, for education, that has an impact. Now, let's talk about some of these extreme Alabama policies. That is why all of this is coming about in the first place. OK, now it seems as if uh, there was a main what the, these are a main factor as to why the military is reconsidering this. Um, and again, they first said that they would go to um, to Alabama, but. Now, maybe not. Now, let's talk about health care and some of their policies there. Similar to here in Florida and other places, a lot in the South and in the Midwest, um, they have enacted a strict six-week abortion ban. Okay, And as we've talked about before, a six-week abortion ban is essentially a complete abortion ban because most women do not find out that they are pregnant prior to six weeks of gestation. Um, as, far as, trans, um, gen as far as transgender care, 
In 2022, they enacted a similar policy to what we have here in Florida, um, where they, it would criminalize the the use of puberty blockers and of gender affirming hormones that are medically necessary to treat people, some people with gender dysphoria who are tra transgender. Now, these again, the, well discussed on this channel before why these are so medically necessary, especially for those individuals because of the anxiety, the depression, the suicide effects when people are not able to I, to um, who they identify with is not being respected. And then they cannot actually do that because of other people's policies. Not only that, but um, in Alabama, they are there's also the threat to healthcare providers um, and to jail them just because they would either to not just order this, but even to facilitate it, even to tell a patient about where they can go to another state that could land a doctor in jail time. You know, one of the other things that I'm also hearing, young doctors are not wanting to relocate to these locations either from a lot of these things as well especially in the OBGYN community. P you know, most people go in because they want to be involved with women's health care. And of course, women's reproductive rights is a big part of that. I hear that many people are looking elsewhere for residencies for OBGYN and not in these states because of the because they would not be able to learn the procedures that they want to learn, even if they were to go somewhere else afterwards. Maybe they would want to come to Florida for training and go back to their home state, but they wouldn't be able to get this, the training or they wouldn't be able to even practice the medicine that they would want once they came out if they chose to stay in the state. Now, it's not just on healthcare; It's also on education. OK, now, in April of 2023, the Alabama Department of Early Childhood Education, the secretary of this department, she resigned after the Alabama's governor, Dr. Um, I'm sorry, Governor Kay Ivey, um, banned a pre-K teacher resource book that contained what she had referred to as a woke agenda. Now, this book in question is called the Developmentally Appropriate Practice Book, and it's from the National Association for Education of Young Children. And this is a guide that teaches teachers how to interact with young people on situations that students may ask about, things like gender and race. And so teachers need to learn how, because you know what, just because there is a rule that says that you can't discuss these things, it doesn't mean that it won't come up in a classroom. It doesn't mean that a child won't ask it. And you know what? A teacher needs to be equipped to handle these types of things. They're going to be put on the spot. They need to know how to handle this. And every situation is different. It cannot be just a cookie cutter thing. So there needs to be the ability to think, to process, and to learn in real time with books such as this as to how to handle those situations. In addition to that, Alabama is also banned, having in, in the school libraries is also having books banned because of the content that some people complain about, even though these are books that have been in libraries forever that have never caused a problem before. But again, this anti-woke agenda is deciding who your kid, what your kid can and not cannot read, as opposed to maybe us as the parent, right? Shouldn't we have that ultimate decision, right? Isn't that what parental choice is about? Uh -huh, I think so. Now, what, what's my take on this? Now, overall, obviously, this is just my opinion. And, you know, I have living here in Florida. And again, I, I realize that I'm saying so many things that we're dealing with here. But, you know, I have lived through both Republican and Democratic governors. I've lived here for over 50 years. I have never seen the state enacting and doing the things that are doing now. Now, I've given previous reports about how there is now some pushback being had here in the state of Florida, where now um, the federal um, judges are now starting to look at these transgender um, um, gender reaffirming care bans, that there's already one that's in place. And, and now that's precedence being set for the other. We know that in the state of Florida, there is now a, um, a drive to get abortion placed on the ballot in 2024 to make it a constitutional right for people to have. So, you know, we're going to have to see what happens here in Florida. But I can't say that even with our family, we haven't said, is Florida the place that we really want to spend the rest of our lives? And it's so sad. I'm a Floridian. My practice is here. But to even come up with those types of thoughts, that is so sad. But that is the reality that we're going through. We know that a lot of gay people are leaving the state. They're flocking the state. We know educators are flocking the state, that, that, they're, that quality teachers, the quality of our education is now being assaulted because teachers don't want to be in a place where either they're not respected or they are not being allowed to teach the way that they feel is best for their individual students. Okay. So, but I do know one thing. I would not want to move to another state that did not uh, did not allow for reproductive choice. I would, you know, if my if if a daughter of mine 
were to choose to have an abortion for whatever reason, I would want her to be in a place where she could make that decision for herself. Of course, she would get counsel from us, etc. if she chose to. But this is, again, if once she becomes an adult, she would be uh, have the right to do that on her own. Right. That should be her right. Now, I don't want to go to some place where LGP, um, if I let's say I had a, a, a child in the LGBTQ plus community, I would want them to be supported by the community. I would want them to be supported by our government. If I had a transgender child who felt that with uh, because of their gender dysphoria and we felt that it was necessary for them to have gender affirming care, I would want them to be able to do that. That's really important. That's what choice is about. OK, for that matter, I wouldn't want my child to um, to be able to I mean, to go to a library and not be able to pick out the book that he or she would like to read. If it's in a, if these books, again, they've been in the libraries forever. They weren't causing any problems. You know what? If I were a parent and I said to the library, I don't want my child picking out this book or taking out that book or I know what my book child's being home because I'm involved in their life. I could always choose as a parent to say, hey, that's not an appropriate book for you. We don't want you doing that. But to put this on the entire society, on the entire school, on people who may want their kids to learn about penguins who raise a, a um, who raise an egg and a child together. But they're both male, for instance, because that's just a horrible thing to some people that this actually happens in nature. Right. The fact that America um, that um, Amanda Gorman's poem was banned and moved out of some child sections in in um, in some um, kids sections of the library because some people didn't feel it was appropriate, which to me was one of the most beautiful poems um, when that she did for the inauguration that I've ever did. I actually got a T-shirt that has the part of the poem on it. I was so moved by it. OK, now everyone should be entitled to the medical personal and educational choices that they wish again that is medical freedom that is personal freedom that is liberty okay and so and that's what just blows my mind is the people who are against this say that they're all for those things but they are not they're in it for themselves they're only they're trying to make policies that will affect other people when really they should be maybe focusing on their own home and letting other people be have a nice day mm -hmm.